Hello from Calvary. This is Pastor Greg with your word for the day for Tuesday, October 27th from Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 39 and 40. Have you ever noticed how we tend to think our way of doing things is if it's not the only way, it must certainly be the best way? Sometimes this attitude shows up in how we view our church. I can remember instances where church had major disputes over things that in retrospect didn't even matter, but I thought I'd cook up a couple of examples. Men must wear coats and ties on Sunday. Hawaiian shirts, not allowed. I guess you know where I stand on that one. How about this? Women must wear dresses and hats. This is Havasu. When was the last time you saw a woman in a dress except at a wedding? And does a baseball cap qualify? And then there's the time people argued over whether to allow deviled eggs at a church potluck. Deviled eggs, think about that. You'll get it. Church controversies are not new. Paul began his first letter to the church at Corinth by condemning a conflict which was leading toward division over which teacher was the greatest. He wrote in chapter 1, beginning at verse 10, Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. It's been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, each of you says, I'm of Paul, or I'm of Apollos, or I'm of Cephas, or I'm of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Some years ago, Pastor Chad made a metaphorical observation concerning the differences among Christians. The context was how we wrongly concentrate on those differences rather than our shared core beliefs. Chad likes ice cream. Yep, he really does. He even worked for a Baskin Robbins ice cream store featuring 31 flavors, 31 different flavors of ice cream. He related how people would argue as to whether strawberry or chocolate was superior or whether Rocky Road had more nuts than pistachio. Me, I'm simple. Vanilla is just fine, as long as it's covered with chocolate syrup, cherries, whipped cream, but I digress. See, Pastor, being an ice cream, ice cream expert of some renown, pointed out that every single flavor of ice cream shares 95% the same ingredients. It's the 95% that makes ice cream ice cream. Did you know there are over 40 churches in Lake Havasu City? And not a single one is like any other. Different flavors, one and all. Which brings us to our passage today from Mark chapter 9. And it reads this. Now John answered him saying, Teacher, we saw somebody who does not follow us casting out demons in your name. And we forbade him because he does not follow us. Jesus said, don't forbid him. For one who works a miracle in my name can soon afterwards speak evil of me? No. For he who is not against us is on our side. Let's set this up. A bit earlier, the disciples were complaining to Jesus that they could not cast out a certain demon. And Jesus answered that some could only be cast out by prayer, that is, by operating under the power of God. Maybe his answer was a mild rebuke concerning the disciples operating under their own power. Just before John brought up the subject of someone else casting out demons in verse 38, these same disciples had been arguing over who would be the greatest in the coming kingdom. Now they're suggesting that anyone not in their group could be anything in that kingdom at all. That's exclusivity. John said, this guy did something we couldn't do, so we told him to stop. After all, Weren't they Jesus' only disciples? What right did anyone else have to use his name? Someone not in their group was successfully doing something they had failed to accomplish. This wasn't a misuse of Jesus' name, but an unauthorized use of Jesus' name. He is not one of us. Jesus' response, he's not against us, so he's on our side. He is like one of us. So often through church history have Christ's people forgotten these words, to the disciples. We're not to condemn others who act in Jesus' name just because they're not part of our group, our church. Those who act in the name of Jesus are with us even though they're not of us. It's a dangerous idea that our model of church is the only one that is right and the only one that God is blessing and sustaining. Throughout the Middle East, there's an axiomatic saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Our common enemy is not those other people who prefer a slightly different flavor. 
Our common enemy is the one standing against Christ and his church, ours and all the other 40 in Havasu. And the grace that comes from Jesus is not limited to just our particular flavor. It's available to all who will act and live in Jesus' name. So let us present to the world that very thing that Jesus said in John chapter 13, verses 34 to 35 in the upper room, that which would identify us as his people. Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Love is the tie that binds us all together in Jesus' name. He is not against us. He is on our side. So let us treat all believers accordingly, even if they're not of us. They are with us. May God bless your day and your week in Jesus' name, and let us know how you're doing. Bye.